In just a moment, enjoy the Aldrich family. But first, this is Bob McKenzie. A little later this evening, why not stop off at the Phil Harris Alice Fay household just for laughs? As another Sunday feature, Theater Guild on the Air will star John Lund and Viveka Linfors in Robert Nathan's heartwarming story of two refugees from war torn Europe in their flight to freedom. Our story's title The Seagull Cry. Then for mystery fans, there's another Dragnet case history and our newest Sunday show, Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Just stay tuned to this station. And now it's the Aldrich family on NBC. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! Yes, it's the Aldrich family as transcribed, written by Clifford Goldsmith. Someone once said that when you finally grow up and leave your teenage behind you, it's like being expelled from paradise. You can't ever go back. But there's one thing you can do. You can recall that wonderful time of your life in The Misadventures of Henry Aldrich. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room. It's mid-afternoon. Now listen, Mary, for the last time, I'm not going to ask you again. Where is it? I don't have it, Henry. All right, Mary, all right. Just remember, I'm not going to ask you again. Good. Why should I go around humiliating myself? That's what I say. Sure. The last time, Mary, where'd you put it? Henry, I give you my word, I don't know where it is any more than you do. All right, Mary, but I just want you to know that I know you took it. Mary took what, Henry? My... Oh, nothing, Mother, nothing at all. Now, wait a minute, Mary, don't go upstairs. I'd like to make you a proposition. I'm busy. Now, Mary? But, Mary, will you let me search your bureau if I promise to put everything back? No! Henry... Sam. Hello, Alice. Dear, why in the world are you coming home from the office at this time of day? For a very special reason. Don't let me forget this envelope. Envelope? Is that why Mother, you... Mother, will you please call Mary and tell her you want her downstairs at once? What for? She locked herself in her room. Henry, could you come in here? In just a minute, Father. I have to go outside for something. Sam, why are you home so early? Well, all summer I've been saying that sometime Henry and I ought to pack up and go off on a camping trip. Dear, you aren't going on a camping trip in October, are you? Why not? I'm all caught up at the office. But October... Ah, Alice, there's a tang in the air. All the leaves are starting to turn color. It's a wonderful idea. What is there so wonderful about sleeping on the hard, damp ground with trees dripping things on you all night? Well, it gets the poison out of your system. I'll come back a new man, and after all, I did promise Henry. Well, I'm sure he's forgotten all about it. All right, he'll enjoy it, Alice. He'll enjoy it. How long will you be gone? Oh, maybe two or three nights. Sam Aldrich. Father, will you please call Henry? Where is he? He ran out in the yard and got the ladder out of the garage, and now he's putting it up to my window. Henry, will you please take that ladder back? Mother, he's practically off. Listen, Mary, for the last time. Good heavens. <laughs> dear, dear, did you hurt yourself? No, Mother, I'm all right. I think... <laughs> Henry! Everything's all right, Father. I can fix your ladder. Will you please come in the house? He can't, Father. He's all wrapped up in a rose bush. <laughs> there, Alice, is a good example of why I should take Henry on a trip. He needs to get away from the house. What's wrong with the house? Nothing, nothing. It's just that Henry needs to work off a little of that energy out in the fresh air. Dear, he was just out in the yard. <laughs> that isn't the same thing. Father? What, Henry? Did that ladder cost a great deal? Henry. Yes, sir? Uh, Sam, I've got to go up and get something in Mary's room. Very well. Uh, wait a minute, Mother. I'd like to go with you. Henry. Yes, Father? Would you mind waiting here, please? What do you, mean you, don't have you want to speak to me now? I do. Oh. Henry, how would you like to get away from all this? You're going to send me away just because I broke the ladder? <laughs> how would you like to go on a camping trip? Alone? I'll go with you. In October? The weather prediction is warm and sunny for the next few days. Perhaps the last good ones we'll have. How about it? Go camping? Just the two of us? Yes, sir. We'll start this afternoon. Sleep right out in the woods. Catch our own fish. Cook our own grub. The only thing is, Father... That's trouble. I have to go to the movies tonight. To the movies? Yes, sir. 
A bunch of us sort of plan to go this evening. Well, wouldn't you rather get out and eat your own fish and... But gee whiz, Father, they're counting on me to sit with them. Couldn't we go some other time? Well, not as well as today. Not any later this year. What's more, Homer Brown and his father may go with us. Homer and Mr. Brown? That throws a different light on it. But Homer's seen the picture and it doesn't matter to him. I see. Very well. Couldn't we go tomorrow, Father? No, Henry, if you don't care any more about it than that, then you needn't even think of going. Mr. Aldrich! Come in, Homer. I am in. I know. Hi, Henry. Hello, Homer. Mr. Aldrich, my father wanted me to come over and tell you he doesn't know why he didn't think of it before. But we can't possibly go on that camping trip. Why not? We have to go to a wedding this afternoon and a party afterwards. That's quite all right, Homer. I'm not sure I wanted to go camping anyway. Aren't you going at all, Father? Alone. Well, look. Gee whiz, I'll go with you. No, thank you, Henry. Son, will you come upstairs, please? What's the trouble now? Mary's jammed the key in her door and she can't get it unlocked. I'll be right there. Father, wouldn't you like to join us at the movies? At my expense? Thank you, I would not. Henry, what did your mother say was the matter with Mary? Boy, do you know what she did to me, Homer, just to be humorous? No, what? She stole my diary. Your diary, Henry? My five-year diary. I just started it this year. And Mary has it? Sure. And it's got in it what I think of everybody I know. Including me? Sure. Well, come on. I'll help you look for it. Henry, may I have a talk with you? With I, Mother? Hello, Mrs. Ulrich. Hello, Homer. Would you mind stepping into the hallway for a minute? What, what do you want me to do out there, Mrs. Ulrich? Just wait till I'm through talking. Oh. Oh, oh, I get it. Well, I'm sure whatever it is, Henry didn't mean it. Mother Mary started the whole thing by taking my diary. That isn't what I want to talk about. Dear, your father feels rather badly. Father does? Because you'd rather not go camping. Oh. But, Mother, I told him I'd like to go. He said you insisted on going to the movies. Gee, I don't know where he ever got that impression. I'll admit I did mention the movies, because it's a picture I feel it's my duty to see. I didn't refuse to go camping. Well, you see, dear, your father does enjoy doing things with you. And I'm afraid this time he was just a little hurt. Oh. Well, gee, I didn't realize he was that sensitive. <clears throat> Maybe I ought to take him camping. Would you like to? Sure, it'd do him a lot of good. He needs to get away from the house for a while. The house? Sure, out in the fresh air in different surroundings. Oh, gee whiz. Homer, what's the matter? Uh, Nothing, Henry. This table drawer came out too far, that's all. Homer, why are you going through the whole table drawer? Looking for something of Henry's. Mother, Father wants to know whether we have any iodine. What happened? He hurt his finger opening my door, and he's feeling very sorry for himself. Mother. Uh, yes, Henry. I'm not speaking to Mary. Will you please tell her I'll go up and get the iodine from Father? Mother, I think Henry's entirely too sensitive. Mary, dear, do you know where Henry's diary is? Well... Exactly what do you mean by that, Mother? I mean, did you hide it? Well, yes, but... Well, yes, but... Well, yes, but... That's what puzzles me. Well, where did you put it? In the clothes hamper. Where did you put it? In the clothes hamper. Where did you put it? In the clothes hamper. And when I went back to get it, it was gone. Mary Aldrich. Oh, I don't really have even the slightest idea as to where it is. For all I know, it may have gone to the laundry. Now, Mary, I don't think that was very nice. But, Mother, there wasn't one word in it the laundry could take offense at. Mrs. Aldrich, is Henry still upstairs? Homer, what are you doing in there? Well, did you know one of the drawers in your desk is locked? Homer, please leave my desk alone. <laughs> Mary, I want you to do something for me. What is it, Father? Do you see this brown envelope? Yes. Well, before I forget, when a Mr. Warren calls for it, will you please be sure that he gets it? Certainly, Father. Sam, are you and Henry really going camping? Yes, Alice. We had a little talk upstairs, and I agreed to take him. Uh, Mary, did I write Mr. Warren's name on the envelope? Oh, my goodness, Father. I can certainly remember Mr. Warren, can't I? Well, don't lose it. It's extremely important. Mother, did Father tell you I agreed to take him? Yes, Henry. Mary, what's in that envelope? Huh? Don't you wish you knew? Can't you tell me? It's something very private. Sam, I'll go in the kitchen and boil a couple dozen eggs for you and Henry to take with you. Gee, Mother, you don't need to boil any eggs. No, Alice, we'll cook our own food. What food? The fish we catch. All we want is a little flour so we can make biscuits and some bacon. Hey, Henry. What, Homer? I found your diary. You did? What does this mean? It says, Sam dropped in tonight and I found him terribly nice, but very sensitive. Who's very sensitive? 
Homer, where did you get that? Well, you know that locked drawer in your desk? Uh, may I have it, please? It happens to be mine. Alice, when did you write that? Uh, never mind. We can't read it? We certainly may not. I'm going to take it out and burn it. Well, come on, Henry. Let's go up and get into our old clothes. Sure, Father. So long, Homer. You're leaving me, Henry? Don't you want to go home? Well, I was going to look for your diary some more. Wait a second, Homer. I just had a wonderful idea. Boy, will it kill Mary. It will? She's got a brown envelope, Homer. A brown envelope? She says it's very private. And before I go camping, I'm going to get it and hide it. You are? Sure, sure. The only thing is, Homer... You're not afraid of Mary, are you? Well, no, but maybe I really ought to... After all, Henry, you aren't going to open the envelope, are you? She was, no. You're just going to hide it for a few days to get even. I think it's a great idea. Sure. And boy, will that teach her a lesson about taking things that don't belong to her. Father. Yes, Henry? I don't mean to be critical, but don't you think the fish would bite better if we didn't whistle? Yes, good idea. Nice tangy day, isn't it? Just look at those leaves. Brown, red. I think I'll cast out here in this other direction. They don't seem to be biting very well. Give them time. They're just getting used to us. Boy, I have to laugh every time I think of it. Every time you think of what? The way I got even with Mary. <laughs> you did. She did I hide something of hers. Yeah. <laughs> I remember once when your Uncle John came to visit us. He left his bag up in his room. Father, what's the matter? I think I got a bite. Good. If we just keep quiet I'm now, be quiet. Now you hook a little. That's what I'm doing. Oh, gee whiz. What was that? He kicked our knapsack into the water. Oh, I can get it. Be quiet, though. All I have to do is to take my shoes and socks off and wade right out to where the... Snagged. You better hurry, Father. The current's taking it away. Here I go. It's a little chilly this time of year. I'll get it all right. Be careful, Father. It's a little deeper than I thought. You want to throw me your coat, Father? No. I just have to take one more step. And... Who is Father? Father? Where are you, Father? Mary, don't you have the slightest idea as to where you put it? I'm almost positive that I put it here on this hall table. And it was a brown envelope? Yes, about this big. Is that Mr. Warren waiting in the living room? Uh, no, dear, it's Will Brown, his uncle. Well, I'm going to ask him something. Oh, Mr. Brown? Yes, Mary? Does your Mr. Warren really need that envelope today? He sure does. He was down at your father's office this morning and got a little excited or something and walked off and left it. I see. Just how valuable is it? Well, it wouldn't be valuable to anybody else, but it certainly means a lot to my nephew. It does? He had his marriage license in it. Oh, is that all? That's all. He's planning to be married at 5 o'clock. Today? I hope you don't think I'd be wearing a cutaway like this a day ahead of time. <laughs> Yes, sir. My nephew's whole future's in that envelope. Well, look, Mr. Brown, would you mind sitting down just a minute while my mother and I go through my room once more? Well, I won't sit down exactly. I don't want to ruin this coat. I'll just sort of lean against the wall. Put another stick on the fire, Henry. That's what I'm doing, Father. Do I smell something burning? It's just a fire, I think. Boy, these fish sure are tasty, aren't they? Yeah. Have some more? I don't mind if I do. Sure was smarter, Mother, to put this can of sardines in the knapsack. <laughs> Your mother thinks of everything. They're even imported. Gee, you ought to see the big one I just got. Big what? Sardine? Mosquito. <laughs> Father, you aren't shivering, are you? No, no, no. I'm almost dry. <laughs> Thirty is wonderful out here in the woods in October. Feel that tang in the air, Henry? I bet Will Brown's sorry he couldn't come with us. Well, whose wedding did he have to go to? His nephew, John Warren. Hmm, 20 minutes to six. Ought to be just about married. Father, is there any dessert? Yes, take this knife and cut a piece of that cake. Oh, gee whiz. Cut from the end that didn't go in the lake. 
You know, son, as soon as we're through eating, I think we'd better move on to a place where there aren't so many mosquitoes. Father, maybe you did smell something burning. What is it? Gee whiz, I didn't know you put your shoes right next to this fire. Go through that pile of papers, dear, and I'll go through this one. I've been through all of them twice, Mother. I just went through the trash pile, and there's no sign of any license there. Will Brown, you haven't been going through the trash pile in that cutaway, have you? I used a long rake. (laughs) Did I just hear the phone ring? If you did, don't answer it. Why not? They've been heckling us for two hours. When we find the envelope, my nephew can get married, and not until then. My goodness, look at this. What, Mother? I just found a Christmas card we never opened. I wonder why Mrs. Standish has been so cool to me all year. Well, wait until you see how my nephew reacts to you. Where's he going on his honeymoon? To New Hampshire. To New Hampshire? Well, they'll like it there. They will if they ever get there. Father, where are you? Here, Homer. Well, look, they wanted me to tell you the bride's having hysterics. Oh, my good Hysterics, Homer? She says she's never going to speak to the groom again as long as she lives. That's a fine thing. Are all the guests still there? Sure. When I left, they just finished the wedding cake. Here, I, I brought your piece. <laughs> Not now. Just help us look for that license. Well, what did it look like? It's in a brown envelope. A brown envelope? Uh, yes, dear. A brown envelope? About this large? What's the matter with you, Homer? Have you seen it? The marriage license? Yes. No, sir. Only, do you know what I think... I think we ought to get in the car and find Mr. Aldrich. Sam Aldrich? He's with Henry. I'm positive that'd be the safest thing to do. Where is it they're camping out? They set up near McCorkle's Rocks. McCorkle's Rocks? Way up there? Well, gee, Father, we could find them in less than two hours. And I have a feeling that's the only thing to do. Alice, call the wedding and tell them to go ahead with the reception. We'll get the bride and groom married later. <laughs> We'll return to the Aldridge family in just a moment. His voice has thrilled millions. His curly locks have been compared to spun gold. His background is that of a man of the world. Who is he? Nobody but Phil Harris. And tonight, you can join Phil and his long-suffering wife, Alice Faye, in another of their funny misadventures. Then your weekly Theater Guild on the Air presents John Lunn and Vivica Linfor is an attender story of two war orphans. Seagull Cry by Robert Nathan. And next comes two of the top NBC News programs. First, Martha Roundtree's panel conference, Meet the Press, and then the American Forum of the Air with Theodore Granick as your moderator. On both shows, NBC microphones will bring you the people who are the names in tomorrow's headlines. So check your local newspaper for broadcast times. Stay tuned to this NBC station. For Theater Guild on the Air, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, Meet the Press, and the American Forum of the Air. And now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. To get even with his sister, who had lost his diary, Henry has hidden an envelope which he believes is hers, and he's gone off on a three-day camping trip. He's unaware of the fact that the envelope contains an important marriage license. The scene is in the woods. The time is late at night. Father, where are you? Right here, Henry. Where? On this blanket. Oh. You think we'll like this place better than the last two places we unpacked in? There isn't a mosquito anywhere near here. Now lie down and get comfortable. Gee, I wish our flashlight hadn't dropped in the water. You don't need a flashlight. Father, have you any idea where we are? I know exactly where we are. We're about a mile and a half from the main line of the Y&R Railroad. Now lie down and go to sleep. I am. Hey, this is the life, eh, son? You think it'll rain? There isn't a chance. (laughs) Gee, what was that? Just a thunderstorm way over on the other side of the valley. Now close your eyes and go to sleep. Yes, Father. I wonder why the stars aren't out. Give them time. They'll come out. It's too bad Will Brown and Homer couldn't have come along with us. Who's what did you say it was? Mr. Warren, the young businessman who just moved to town. I expect to do a lot of business with him. What's that? 
just some animal. <laughs> Why don't you just relax, Henry, and enjoy nature? Sounded to me like a train whistle. Well, it might have been a train over on the Y and R. Oh. Listen, Father, don't you think we ought to go some other place? Now, Henry, there's no sense in trying to go anyplace else. We'll be just as comfortable here as if we were home. Father, is it raining where you are? <laughs> well, just a little. You better pull your blanket over your head. So your train whistle sounds closer. Well, of course it sounds closer. It's going to pass within a mile and a half of it. Father. Father, the headlight's pointing right at us. What's that? Do you feel any ties under you? How did we get way over here? Come on! Father into the woods. Oh, man, they couldn't have gone. What? What's the matter, Father? Nothing. I just fell down again. I never thought when I put this cut away on, I'd be wearing it out hiking. <laughs> do you want your piece of wedding cake now? I do not. All I want is that license. Here, Homer. Shine that light over this way. Well, what is it? A campsite. Somebody cooked their supper here. Where? Right there. See? A sardine can and a burnt shoe. <laughs> uh, probably a couple of tramps. Come on, over. Is is that rain I feel? Oh, just the leaves rustling. Was that leaves too? Oh, Sam, Sam, Audrey. Hey. Are you sure the front door was locked? I am. Let's try the back door. That's what I'm doing. Gee, don't you think we ought to call Mother? No. Real softly? But there's no use disturbing your mother. It's nearly midnight. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Father, why couldn't we sleep over at the Browns? When we drove by, the lights were still on. And the guests were still there, too. We're not walking in on any wedding party looking like this. Oh. We're the last people in the world they want to see tonight. Gee, even the windows are locked. Father, I know what we could do. What? Camp out in the garage. No, Henry, your mother'd never let us hear the last of it. Oh, incidentally, when you see her in the morning, it won't be necessary to mention the fact that we lost a frying pan. How about your shoe that we lost? Well, that was an old shoe I bought at least two years ago. Hey, wait, I know how we can get in. Where are you going? The cellar door is unlocked. Follow me. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I think everything is. Well, then, I wouldn't worry, dear. They'll probably go away in a few minutes. Uh, yes, of course. I hope I haven't disturbed you. Oh, no. No, not at all. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it, it wasn't anyone, Mary. Uh, just Mrs. Kilmer. Mrs. Kilmer? She says not to worry, but there were two men outside. Two men, Mother? Now, don't be afraid. Every door and window is locked, except perhaps the cellar door. Didn't we lock that? Mary, we've got to go down and see whether we did or not. At this time of night? Yes, dear. And then let's not turn on any lights. I won't, Mother. Oh. Now, don't wait here in the hall, dear, while I answer the phone. Who do you suppose it is? Hello? Mrs. Aldrich, this is Joe Graham. Who? You know, the best man at John Warren's wedding. Oh, yes. Do you have any idea as to where Mr. Brown and Homer went? Uh, yes, up to McCorkle's Rocks to look for Henry and Mr. Aldridge. 
Well, they haven't come back yet. We're getting a bit worried. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I'd better take a couple of the guests and go out and try to find them. Well, hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, no, not at all. Bye. Goodbye. Mother. Yes, dear? I just ran down and locked the cellar door. You locked it? I never was so frightened in my life. And I was just in time, Mother. I could hear somebody right outside. Uh, Dear, I'm sure we're perfectly safe. Everything is locked. What's that? Mary. Listen. Mary. Mary, someone's putting a ladder against the side of the house. They're going to climb in one of the windows. Shouldn't we call the police? Yes, dear. I knew all the time Henry shouldn't have left that ladder lying there on the ground. Wasn't it broken? I thought it was. I don't see how anybody... What time is it, Sam? Ten minutes to three. Are we almost home, Father? We are. Mary? Yes, Father? As long as you live, if you ever discover that Henry is keeping another diary, you are not to hide it in the laundry hamper or any other place. Is that clear? Yes, Father. And Henry? Yes, Father, I know. I thought you made a very nice best man, Sam. Thank you. Even if you were wearing cocky trousers. (laughs) Gee, it's too bad Homer and Mr. Brown didn't get there for the ceremony. Well, my goodness, the way they looked when they did get back, it's just as well. Anyway, it was a very nice wedding. Didn't you think the bride looked lovely? Oh, yes, Mother. A little sleepy, perhaps, but lovely. (laughs) I didn't like her so much. She was pretty darn cool to me. You don't say. (laughs) Oh, bless you, Father. Sam Aldrich, are you catching cold? Certainly not. In October, it's just... Well, it's just... Frankly, I think there was a little too much tang in the air. (laughs) Radar can't do the entire job of protecting our country from a surprise air attack. That's up to us as individual citizens. Right now, the Air Defense Command needs 300,000 more volunteers for its Ground Observer Corps, made up of patriotic citizens who contribute a few hours of their spare time each week. Both men and women from teenage up can join the Ground Observer Corps and perform a valuable service to our country. Write a phone your nearest Civil Defense Center. A write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Henry, did you see your diary here? Gee whiz, Molly, where did that come from? Well, it just came back with the laundry. What's this piece of paper with it? Oh, well, I didn't read it. It says... We cannot accept responsibility for laundering this article, but suggest you send it to a reliable dry cleaner. The Aldridge Family as Transcribed is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Henry is played by Bobby Ellis and Homer by Michael O'Day. Mr. and Mrs. Aldridge are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. Your announcer is Dick Dudley. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with the Aldridge family. Good night, everybody. Tonight, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show and Theater Guild on the Air over NBC. Mm-hmm.